Hi, Carol here. A big warm welcome to my craft room. I have missed everybody and I'm sorry that I haven't had a tutorial up. This is the stand for this porcelain doll. I'm going to fix the heel while I'm gabbing here. Um, I have had company. Uh, family is down for two weeks. Today was my husband's birthday so I did baking most of the day and I made his favorite black forest cake and put a tutorial up. I am going to put one up as soon as I edit it. <laughs> yeah, it's the quickest, easiest black forest cake you'll ever, ever make. So I thought I'd share it with you. I'm just cleaning up the pantaloons that were underneath the, um, kind of looks like Anna Green Gables, doesn't it? And I'm going to clean all that up. We're going to put some frills, two layers of frills on the bottom. We're going to put a little belt around it. And we're also going to put a frill on the inside, a tucked frill. So um, I, I just want to tell you, although I lost quite a bit of the filming as I'm taking off the clothes here, <laughs> I'll explain it. I lost the, the making the bonnet. And the construction of the three different materials. First, there was a crinoline. It's kind of like a camel beige with a two inch thick seam binding all the way around that pushes the dress out. Then I went with the uh, gorgeous pale peach and then the lace over top. Thank you for being so understanding when you watch this and we will move forward, right? We're going to give her a style and a haircut. Oh yes. And what I like about this is she has plenty of hair. So I took it into sections and as I'm combing it, I cut off the ratty ends. This way, if I just take little pieces, I'm going to be able to put, put it up, put ringlets coming down, and I actually use pins that have the little ball end on it to keep the curls in place. And you might be asking me, are you kidding? Pins? Yes, because this has like a basket weave holding her hair on. You can see the lines in there. And because it's like a net, those pins secure the ringlets perfectly. And with a ton of hairspray, <laughs> it's going to stay on. Every time you take the bonnet off and on, those curls are not going to move. They are secure. I love the hair color here. I'm trying to put the stand on for you. But isn't that a beautiful auburn red color? It just really went with the... I had to go with the peaches because she has peach lipstick on. So it all made sense. So here's where I have to explain, try and explain what I did. First you see the camel colored... Uh, it's a crinoline in a sense. It's beautiful satin. And then you have the peach dress, which I cut on an angle going out so that you could see the crinoline. Both of the satin pieces start at the waist. So I gathered it together uh, using a long sewing needle and I did a running stitch. And that's the way I put it on so that you had all that beautiful gather. And then from the neck down, I took a piece of lace, beautiful lace, isn't it? And I wrapped it around so that the square ends were on the right and the left because I'm going to take that and I'm going to gather up the from the point all the way up to just about under her hand there and we're going to put a rose a peach rose so it looks like it's all gathered up see how I'm doing this I think I did it twice because I wanted the pleats to be absolutely perfectly aligned so um, maybe I didn't keep it in the film, but I staple it for now just so I can see that they're even when I hold her up on each side. The Tim Holtz little stapler is so tiny, it worked out perfectly. And look at that. When I leave them in there too, by the way, and then I just put the flower on because that's a great way to have two times the strength holding it up, right? And here's something, uh, when I wrapped the it all the way around, I put the seam going down, but then I wanted to see the back. See how it the camel color straight down, that's the crinoline. Then the actual dress tees out and in the shape of um, 
a T, kind of rounded T. And then on the arm, see where my, uh, I, I put glue up there all the way down and I, to separate the dress from, to make the sleeves and separate it here, I put glue holding it in and that way I didn't have to run any stitches down here. It just worked out perfectly. I took my two Betty Crocker spoons and I just tucked them from side to side and it looks like when she gets the cape on it honestly looks like it is put on over her head and she has sleeves. I was amazed. This was a more difficult edit to do because so much was missing. So I hope that I'm able to explain everything. I gathered up, like I said, the camel colored crinoline. Then I the the peach here, um, I put the sewing, I you know, put a running stitch and then gathered it together. And now this Stampin' Up ribbon, the gathered um it's more of a pink peach, like a salmon, but you're not gonna see it because of the cape. But just in case the cape got moved, of course, I wanted to have it um, wrapped around her waist so everything came together as far as the pleats. And see how it looks like she has sleeves just by gathering the glue and pinching it together going down because nothing is holding that together but around the neck. And let me tell you, this is only for show. It's going on Marion's dresser. She won't be playing with it. And here's the cape. Now, this was a little vest. I would say about a size six in children's little vest. I took it apart. The back side I used to make the bonnet and the two flaps I brought together, the front, and look how well it went together. I just folded it, uh, as you see here, and then on the sides where it's longer on the sleeves, I secured it with the glue, and now I'm going to see all the peach roses off to the right. I'm going to match them up as little um, rose buttons going down the slant. I really love the way, you know, with the back like that, uh, you know, going out in a V and then the pulling the flap over. I wanted everything to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye and that when you want to have that just make your lines go in different directions on your clothing. Now listen to me like I'm a pro but <laughs> you know it works that way with making cards or mixed media. You oh I gotta stop there. See that gather on the back? We're gonna pull that up and cut it off. I wanted to make sure I could see that camel colored camisole and the peach that went in a V, I wanted to be able to see that. And so I shortened up the back and then I came long, I came around kind of like a flower petal and then I pushed it up like you saw, stapled it and put the roses on each side. So it looks long in the front and then it naturally comes up and it's short, you know, about three inches under the back of the vest. And I loved that look. So once I get it gathered together here, you can take a peeky and doesn't that look gorgeous? Um, for my first time uh, being a dress designer and going from Anne of Green Gables to Queen Victoria, I was thrilled. Now here is, wait till you see what I made that bonnet out of. It was an old, uh, it, uh, let me see, it was a heart and it was missing half the guts and it was wire and it was perfect. That's all I can say. Now here's the bottom. I did the lace right there underneath. I put a nice beautiful lace piece. Then another lace piece under the flower. And that flower was yours, Janet. That's the one you brought me down that you made for me. So your rose is on the back of my bonnet, Janet. It was perfect. Thank you very much. I just loved your flowers. And now you've got the pantaloon underneath. And at the end of the video, you're going to... I took the doll and I took it apart and I showed it to you so you could see exactly how I made it so you will be able to see it and here I'm wondering if I should put flowers there but instead I put a tassel and then down here before I put that flower on 
I want to put pearls and lace around her hand so that not a lot of her hand is showing. They used to wear clothes where the lace went down the hand. Um, I love history and I love Queen Victoria, her testimony and uh, the era on when she, how she ruled and her clothing it was beautiful so here you go close up the bow is on the side it's a green velvet and then I put a beautiful satin lace on the back so that it stood out and I thought it was so very very uh, quaint and um, it didn't take away from the dress I think it just made it so I slowed it down here so you could see how the crinoline just really I'm kind of I slowed it down as far as the motion but the dress really did move well I like that so underneath I'll explain again I took this applique and I put it right tucked under the lace and then I cut it on both sides so you could see it come down and then I made the this bonnet first so I thought I was going to have a bustle in the back of the dress but I chose not to I remember gone with the wind one of the hats on that beautiful era they were flat on the back and then they came down and with having the wired heart it perfectly folded over on the top um, if I can get to see it there see how it sat back so that all the curls would be in the front of the bonnet and then you had the pleat uh, so that you could see the same material through the pleat as is the crinoline, the uh, camel colored satin. And uh, it came together for me very, very well. I was so happy that, you know, I didn't measure anything. I just pulled up the skirts and um, did that running stitch and you know I was really happy so here I'm putting this to give the illusion that the sleeves are sewn and the hands through them instead of being glued on the back together adding the uh, lace here the trim with the pearls in the middle so that it hung right over to the top of her thumb I think made the separation of the arms and the dress look real like it wasn't glue gunned on there uh, to you know crease it together and then um, I'm going to show you it the bonnet now the back of the bonnet was actually the back of the vest and see I'm lifting it up it looks like they're actually separate uh, sleeves when actually in actuality they're just glue gunned together and here I'm going to add the next lace piece right here and it's just a, it's just the right color of the flowers in the lace that we put on there. So um, I was happy I had that in my stash. And may I once again thank you for joining me for this tutorial that you know where so much is missing, and I'm trying to pull it together. I just hope it inspires you. To, if you want to make doll clothing for you know something you find at the thrift store that you can see how easy peasy it is to make and how much fun it is with just minimal uh, materials which is great couldn't believe that I actually had a clip of the bonnet heart with the metal running through it and how it was missing the gut pieces on one side and I managed to make a uh, bonnet out of it right here let me show you this is the bonnet the way the wires are with the heart it would bend perfectly the top of the heart made that beautiful headband that set back on the little doll's face and it didn't matter that it was missing the guts on that left side because I put all that uh, lace and beaded work on there and now I'm just going to quickly show you the pantaloons. We ended up putting two layers of this beautiful cotton uh, lace around the bottom. And then tucked underneath is the Stampin' Up um, tucked uh, ribbon. You know, the pleated ribbon. 
that matches the head, the waistband. So it all came together. You'll see that when I lift it up. You'll see the waistband. You'll see the pantaloons with the peach colored. Now I'm going to take the hat off. So as I take this off, I'm going to show you the top of the heart is at the top of this creation here. I have a full doily underneath that pleated uh, lace work. I put two pleats on the back. I put an applique down there. This is where you can see the actual doily on the inside. But when you turn it around to the back, okay, so here's the actual doily. Then I put another lace around that. And then it has a beautiful design, doesn't it, on the inside piece. And then I uh, skirted the beautiful um, lace piece on the inside. I took a velvet green uh, ribbon that had stretchy cord to it. And there's Janet's beautiful flower. I cut an applique off the material to put on the flower to pull it together with all the colors. And I seat these um, ribbon ties underneath the work that we did there. And see how that outside piece is a four inch ribbon. That aside, I'm gonna lift up the vest. Look how pretty it is underneath there. It just looks like it was actually sewn in. And here you can see I put those uh, tassels down. They look like coffee color, actually. I put it down on the inside of the arm so you couldn't see where I put the glue down to hold it. I'm going to show you the pantaloon, all the little frills, her socks, her matching peach boots. She has a nice belt on there. And look at that crinoline, the satin crinoline. And then you've got the satin peach uh, material I took off a dress. I took this off the lace off the same dress um, as you know it all came together. And then I gathered and stapled the two sides so it went up. I have the slant on the vest, which adds some, um, I don't know, mystery. It just sets the angles right. Then look at the way you can see the back because I raised the lace up and lifting it up on both sides just makes it aesthetically yummy and uh, the roses on there on her sleeves as well as the ones right beside her and now let's do this look at that that heart could not have been better just love the way it was I was able to manipulate the wire and now I will take it all the way to over to the right side. And I'll t I like that it's got the lace um, underneath there so that it's sticking up towards her face instead of the dark green velvet. And I'll tie it right here on the side. I remember this in Gone with the Wind when she was standing up looking in the mirror and she tied that hat wrong. <laughs> and uh, she, it was so cute. I love that movie. Yes, anything to do with uh, the South, the Old South, and, uh, well, and Queen Victoria, the Victorian age. I, I just love the gowns. I love the air, and I love the history. So here we go. Let's do another bow and see how easy it is, even though we have it double stacked. And look at her face. She has real eyelashes on the top and bottom. It's just cute as a button. So let's stand her up and see how she looks. So there's the front. Love the way that hat peaks right up towards the middle of her head and forward. There's the, I call it a crinoline, but it's not crinoline material. It just is a hooped, um, a hooped crinoline, I guess they call it. I'll go over the pantaloons, the three different layers, uh, the dress, the, the socks I glue gunned under the knee so that they would stay up and then I put the shoes on, the little leather shoes. Uh, I love the bow, Janet, that you gave me and adding, cutting out a little piece of that applique and putting it on top just came together for this doll. And um, yeah, that's Marion's doll and I think I will do some brush lettering or maybe calligraphy and put uh, her name on her arm We'll call her Victoria.
like Queen Victoria. So thank you, my friends. Thank you to my new subscribers, the ones that joined after my 10,000 subscriber celebration. I want to thank you and welcome you. I hope you are being inspired, and I do have more tutorials going up. I just really have not been uh, well, and my migraines are coming on strong, and, and so is my company. <laughs> I love my family here, and you know, all the baking today, but I did get, I did promise you to get this up and edited, so there you have it. Have a blessed week, everybody, and enjoy the pictures. I'll see you on the next tutorial.